Greetings. The Lord is with you. I'm pleased to be with you this evening. I'm Pastor Bob Quaintance from Good Hope Lutheran Church in Boardman, Ohio, and uh, we are uh, on Thursday, November 17th, and um, I'm going to switch glasses here for a second. These are bugging me for some reason. Um, and uh, we we are journeying through the New Testament one chapter a day, five days a week. And uh, I was off on Tuesday for our church council meeting and Wednesday uh, for our Life to Life discipleship experience. So I'm on tonight. I missed being with you on, on Wednesday and Thursday when we began reading uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 and 2, 1 on Wednesday. A Tuesday, two on Wednesday, and today would be chapter three. So I've decided to reflect with you on chapter one and two tonight. Tomorrow is chapter four, so we'll do chapter three and four tomorrow, and we'll be caught up. Thessalonians, first and second Thessalonians, written uh, during Paul's uh, missionary journeys, um, and uh, first Thessalonians was written during his second missionary journey, um, and uh, he's uh, writing, I was just making making a note here. Uh, yeah, uh, both of them written during his second missionary journey. Um, he's uh, which was in 49 to 51 AD. I see we have a number of people on Jill, Shirley, Diane. Welcome to everyone who's on tonight. I'm glad you've joined me. Um, so it was written, in that short second missionary journey of two years, two or three years in length. Uh, and uh, he's been staying in Corinth. Remember, he traveled to Galatia uh, and had gone up to uh, Macedonia and Thessalonica and Berea and down to Athens and in Corinth. And uh, uh, he's writing from his time in Corinth. Um, why don't we begin, though, uh, without going any further? Good evening, Mark. Uh, by making the sign of the cross together and saying, we are under the care of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Um, we are uh, made the sign of the cross and let's have an opening prayer. Thank you, Father, that we're together. Thank you for the witness of Paul. Thank you for his expansive prayers. Um, just looking at him, he invites people to follow him and Christ. And Lord, uh, we would do well to follow a person of prayer, a person deeply connected to you. Um, we thank you for the testimonies in the Gospels of Jesus' uh, deep prayer life. Father, bless this hour, or this half hour, as we gather together to hear your word to the people of Thessalonica. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, just by way of further introduction, um, good evening, Mark. Uh, by way of further introduction, uh, the main theme is, without a doubt, the second coming of Christ. Um, he's writing to the church that he had started in Thessalonica during the second missionary journey. It's the capital of the Roman province of Macedonia. Uh, Paul uh, has been asked a question about the timing of the day of the Lord and uh, uh, concern for those who had died and would they miss out on the coming of Christ. Uh, and he'll be addressing that in like the second half. So we'll begin getting into that tomorrow. Um, he, he, he's writing to these people with questions and concerns about their hope in Christ. And he's going to be writing to uh, strengthen uh, their hope in Christ. Um, other themes related to that is the persecution that's ongoing and how Paul sees that as almost normal in the Christian life, uh, that they are coming out of a pagan culture and so uh, given to promiscuity. And so he calls them to sexual holiness and to work, um, not living life, uh, eat, drink, and be merry, sit around the goal of life, not being to sit around and do nothing, but but to... Uh, uh, commands those who are idle to get a job and care for others. Um, and his concern is also that they don't be overly dependent on him, but they respect and honor the the pastors, the ministers, the preachers uh, who have been raised up in their midst. 
So we're going to begin at chapter one and go through chapter two today, and then we'll uh, pick up three and four tomorrow. Uh, Paul um, writes from himself, but also from two of his co-workers, Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians in God, the Father and, our, and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. Now, here he's talking about prayer <laughs> and, uh, and what he thanks God for. We give thanks to God always for all of you. I, he loves these people. He was persecuted in Thessalonica and he had to flee Thessalonica. The Jews were horrendous in Macedonia, uh, excuse me, in, um, throughout Macedonia, beginning in Philippi. Uh, and then Berea, Thessalonica. Um, we give thanks to God always for all of you, constantly mentioning you in our prayers, remembering before God uh, several things. Your work of faith, how, how faith led them to live in such a way that their works flowed from their faith in Christ. Um, remembering your work of faith, your labor of love, well, that is a work of faith, how they just spent their lives not eating, drinking, and being merry or being happy. Um, they spent their life as a life of service, uh, a labor of love, not a have to, but out of great love. Jesus, the Lord of love, filled their lives, and they just naturally went out and loved others. What a, what a great testimony to the, the path of the church. And thirdly, their steadfastness of hope in the Lord Jesus. You've trusted in Jesus, and that's the thing. We, we're called to trust in him every day, all the time, about everything. And he's, as he remembers in, them in prayer, he remembers their, their, uh, their faith, their love, their steadfastness of hope, faith, hope, and love. These, things, these three remain, 1 Corinthians 13, 13. We know, brothers, loved by God. Oh, yes, they are, as are all. We know, brothers, loved by God, that he has chosen you. Uh, good evening, Katie. Uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. We know that he, he has chosen you. How do we know? That God reached down and chose the, the believers in the city of Thessalonica. He has, we know he has chosen you because our gospel came to you not only in word, but also in power. Not their power, but God was doing, as the word was being preached, God was doing miraculous signs. And, and that wasn't from Paul. That, that was from God. And, and so uh, we know that you were chosen because God chose to not only save you, but do these miraculous signs when the word was preached. Um, came to you uh, in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction. You were just brought to, uh, faith is a work of God. And they were brought to deep faith, a deep, full conviction of the truth of the gospel. That's a work of God. And then he says, you know what kind of men we were. We proved to be among you for your sake. The life of a Christian is part of their witness, not, not just what we believe about God, but how our lives have been changed by that belief. We live congruent to that. You know what kind of men we proved to be among you for your sake, and you became imitators of us and of the Lord, of course, because they were trying to imitate the Lord. And, and then, for you received the word... Um, imitators of us. Well, imitators, how? You received the word in much affliction. As Paul was being persecuted and facing affliction, so were they. And even though there were signs to the contrary, oh, the, if, if I believe in Jesus, everything should be just fine. No. The world is opposed. Satan is opposed. And we will struggle. He's going to talk a lot about opposition in chapter 1 and 2. Um, 
but you received the word in much affliction with joy, the joy of the Holy Spirit. In spite of the affliction, in spite of the persecution, their response was steadfastness of faith, labor of love, hope, um, and, and joy that came from the Holy Spirit so that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and Acacia. Um, people were hearing about the faith, the love, the hope, and the joy of the, of the believers facing persecution and affliction in Thessalonica and spread throughout the whole region uh, of uh, Macedonia and Acacia. For not only has the word of the Lord sounded forth from you, in Macedonia and Acacia, not only, and how has it sounded forth? Because they have sent missionaries out to tell others about the Lord. Not only has the word sounded forth from you, but your faith in God has gone forth everywhere so that we don't need to say anything about it. For they themselves, the people of Macedonia and Acacia, they send word to us, they report concerning us the kind of reception we had among you. People tell Paul, we heard about what the Thessalonican people did for you and how you turned from turned to God from idols to serve a living and true God, how they came to faith and, and how you're waiting for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who delivers us from the wrath to come. Well, he's going to be speaking about the second coming. And so here at the end of chapter one, he just dangles that as a theme. Jesus, who delivers us from the wrath of God, uh, wrath to come, Jesus, who was raised from the dead. Um, really still connecting with them on this personal note in this letter. It's only five chapters long. You yourselves know, brothers, that our coming to you was not in vain but that we had already suffered and been shamefully treated at Philippi. Remember the imprisonment? As you know, we had boldness in our God to declare to you the gospel of God in the midst of much conflict. How, how is it that Paul was able to go from one town to another, to another, to another, being beaten and imprisoned and stoned to death in one place? How could he keep doing that? One answer. The power of God was at work to strengthen him to do that. He was so convinced about Jesus, nothing could stop him. Well, that's the power of God. Um, for our appeal does not spring from error or impurity or any attempt uh, to deceive. That's what the Jews were in the towns where he was going were threatened by Paul uh, and eventually the Jews in Jerusalem are going to get him and, and try to kill him. And he gets imprisoned for his safety and appeals to Rome and goes there. And eventually that's where he's killed. Um, but, but our appeal doesn't spring from, as they say, error or impurity or any attempt to deceive. But just as we, as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel, so we speak, not to please men, but to please God. Paul has been entrusted to a gospel specifically to the Gentiles, and he will do what Jesus told him to do. Remember his meeting Jesus on the road. Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Who are you, Lord, that I am persecuting you? I am Jesus, whom he thought was a fraud, whom he thought was still dead. But he was alive and the resurrection of Jesus changed everything in the world. It changed everything in Paul's life. It is the truth and the bedrock foundation of our faith. Um, so we don't speak to please men, but to please God who tests our hearts. For we never came with words of flattery, as you know, nor with a pretext for greed. God is our witness. Other churches often supplied his, his need to be there. He didn't try and get offerings from them. He was trying to bring them to faith. There'll be a time for them to take up offerings and support the work of ministry. But Paul as an evangelist didn't want that. 
He wanted to go free, and so other churches, others paid for it, or at times he worked as a tent maker to earn his own keep. Uh, we didn't come to you with words of flattery. We didn't come to you on a pretext of greed. God is our witness. Nor did we seek glory from people. We don't, want, we don't care if anybody says anything good about us, whether from you or from others, though we could have made demands as apostles of Christ to be paid. Um, but no. But we were gentle among you, like a nursing mother taking care of her own children. Well, that gentleness came from love. One of the gifts God gave Paul was a love for people where he wanted to show Christ and he wanted to join with them in their suffering and care for them as a shepherd. Um, this beautiful picture. Um, I was gentle among you like a mother nursing, taking care of her own children like a nursing mother taking care of her own children. So being affectionate, affection, affectionately desirous of you, we were ready to share with you not only the gospel of God, but our own selves, because you became very dear to us. Just in that short time he was in Thessalonica, he, he fell in love with those people. Verse 8, or excuse me, verse 9. For you remember, brothers, brothers, our labor and toil. We worked night and day that we might not be a burden to any of you while we proclaim to you the gospel of God. There he is out working, doing his trade, probably in tent making, but he got a job working night and day so that he could proclaim the gospel freely. You are witnesses and God also how holy and righteous and blameless was our conduct toward you believers. For you know how, like a father with his children, we exhorted each one of you and encouraged you and charged you to walk in a manner worthy of God who calls us into his own kingdom and glory. Well, he's just pictured himself as a, a, a nursing mother with children, and now he pictures himself like a father teaching and encouraging and giving them a charge, kind of a, a word uh, of what they're to do. And what is that? To work in a manner worthy of God who has called us into his kingdom. Verse 13, and we also thank God constantly for this, that you received the word of God, which you heard from us. This is what Paul is thankful for, they came to faith. They received the word of God, which is at work in you believers. For you brothers became imitators of the churches of God in Christ that are in Judea. You became believers and you became just like the church in Judea. What does he mean? Here he tells us, you suffered the same things from your own countrymen as they did from the Jews as the Christians, as the Jews in Jerusalem uh, and Israel were ill-treated by the Jewish uh, uh, non-believers in Jesus, so you are ill-treated by the Jews where you're at. Um, you suffered the same things from your own countrymen as they did from the Jews. Who and, and what did the Jews do? They killed the Lord Jesus and the prophets, and drove us out of the synagogues, drove us out of the country. Uh, and who had done that? Paul had been one of those, back when he was named Saul, and the persecution that arose after Stephen, um, uh, who killed the Lord Jesus, the prophets, and drove us out, and they displeased God and opposed all mankind. They don't want un, un, non-Jews to become believers, but God does. He sent his son to die for the whole world, which is good news for Bob Quaintons. Um, they oppose all mankind by hindering us from speaking to the Gentiles that they might be saved. So as always to fill up the measure of their sins. How do they fill up the measure of the sins? Not only are they sinning, not only did they kill Jesus, but they're opposing anybody being saved that isn't 
well themselves. And in the end, they will be lost because of that. But the wrath has come upon them at last. Verse 17. Paul concludes this second chapter with a, a word of longing to see them. Um, and an interesting word here. Since we were torn away from you, brothers, for a short time, in person, not in heart. His heart was always close to the Thessalonican Christians, Thessalonian Christians. Since we are torn away from you, brothers, for a short time, remember he had to flee, and then he went down to Athens and then to Corinth, and from where he's writing, um, torn away from you for a short time, brothers, in, in person, not in heart. We endeavored more eagerly and with great desire to see you face to face. We wanted to come back because we wanted to come to you. I, Paul, again and again, but Satan hindered me. We face troubles all the time. Paul says his troubles came as an attack from Satan who desires to fight against anything that Christians are doing or anyone who seeks to honor Christ, to love the Lord, um, and to live out a life of faith and love and hope. Satan will be opposed and he will use any means he can to afflict us. And many times we suffer and we we feel bad about our suffering, what we're going through. And sometimes we're even led to feeling guilty about it, that somehow we must have caused it. Nonsense. An affliction is not a sin. An affliction is an attack that comes against us from a fallen world and from the prince of darkness himself. I, Paul, again and again wanted to come to see you, but, but Satan hindered us. I don't know what happened, maybe some of the persecution, but somehow he was prevented from going. And he nails it down. He says, it's Satan behind that. For what is our hope or joy or crown of boasting before our Lord Jesus at his coming? Is it not you? You are our glory and joy. When Jesus comes again, and, and I think of the parable of the talents, Jesus says, I gave you talents, Paul. What did you do for that? Well, let me, Lord Jesus, it wasn't me. It was the power of the Holy Spirit. Let's be clear, Lord Jesus, about that. It wasn't about me. It was, I just preached the word, but it was your power that, that accompanied the word and brought people to faith. But I'd like to show you, not that you don't know them, Lord, but may I introduce to you my brothers and sisters of the church in Thessalonica. You are my joy, my crown, if I have any boasting, it will be the day I can present you to Jesus. Wow. I guess he does love these people. And they've had some questions about the second coming of Christ. And he'll be getting into that. But he's just bolstering their faith and showing them how much um, pride he has and confidence in them. So tomorrow we'll look at chapter 3 and 4 on Friday. And then we'll be caught up. And Monday we'll look at chapter 5 and then we'll go into 2 Thessalonians uh, the rest of next week. Uh, let's end with a closing prayer. Lord, help us to remember when there are difficulties, they are not from you. You, you stand over everything, and you certainly aren't uh, hindered by the difficulties we go through. And you will certainly see us through them. But these attacks, these afflictions, these persecutions are from the devil. They aren't, they aren't from our failings. Lord, help us always, like the Thessalonians, to, to Lord, be, be people who are, who are strong in our faith, our hope, our love, uh, our work of faith, uh, your work of faith in us, uh, our, uh, our love, our labor of love, and the steadfastness of hope where we're just trusting in you to bring us through. Thank you for this wonderful church, for Paul's love for the, these people, and for the power at work in them. May that power, Lord, 
and that love you have for all the saints be experienced by your people this night. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you so much for joining me tonight. Tomorrow's my day off, but I'll be on at some point on Friday uh, to go through 1 Thessalonians chapter 3 and 4. God bless you. Remember, God loves you, and so do I. Bye-bye.